Hello everyone, my name is Janica. And I'm Steven. And this is Too, Too Lazy, Lazy for Google. Google. On today's episode, we're gonna to talk to you about how to fly one of these guys legally in Canada and get one of these. Hit it. What's up, everybody? Today is June 1st in Canada, and Janica and I recently wrote our exam for oh. the uh, Certificate of Registration, a small remotely piloted aircraft system, the basic operator's license for drones. If you want to get one of these, you need to fill out a 35 uh, question uh, test mm -hmm. online uh, that'll test all your skill and sanity. Um, number one, there's two options of writing the test. You can write your basic or you can write your advanced. And it has a lot of information on this test that pertains mostly to pilots operating small aircraft. Yeah, it's true. It even has questions uh, talking about uh, radio protocols as you're entering an airport. So it's it's really interesting to know why the Ministry of Transportation put those questions in. Exactly. Online yeah. forums, uh, there's tons of people talking about how much they hate this test, <laughs> how much is a cash grab. Uh, so what did you think about those? Well, I mean, it's funny because you write this test off the bat. Number one, they charge you a fee. I think it's like 12 or $15 to write the test. So, was it five bucks? No, it must have been more than that. No, it's like, more than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's like five or ten bucks or something. However, looking at some of these Reddit forums and these these Facebook groups, yeah. people have written this test like five or six times. That adds up. It does. For sure. I yeah. mean, thirty bucks is thirty bucks, but thirty bucks is thirty bucks when you're writing a test to essentially drive you insane. Especially one a test to prove that you're competent with your drone. First of all, you've paid a lot of money for this drone, so you don't want to just crash it into a tree anyway. Exactly. And then second, a lot of us have been flying these safely and uh, competently for years now. Exactly. And, and some of the questions, I mean, the idea of, I won't go into specifics because you're not supposed to give away questions, but let's be honest, lift and drag, like that doesn't really apply to a quadcopter. It applies to obviously a fixed wing aircraft, but that is not a, uh, a Mavic 2 Pro related question. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is uh, I'm torn, right? Because um, I did go through that whole process of getting my pilot's license. Yeah. Um, I Lift and drag does apply to the quadcopter, but does one need to know about that to be able to operate this safely? Mm -hmm. I think that's what the crux of the argument is. Um, a lot of hate comes like, why do I need to know all of this random stuff yeah. to fly the drone safely in a park? You know, and uh, yeah, Stephen, what, what do you have to say about that? I mean, the idea now that as part of the operation of 30 meters uh, away from people and public spaces of flying, it's awkward to find out what exactly is 30 meters because uh, in most public places, and this can be in the country as well as downtown, uh, there are people everywhere. So the idea of operating a drone within that particular radius can be difficult and hard to gauge as these don't have a tracker for I'm 30 meters away from somebody. Yeah, what if someone starts walking towards you? Do you have to start running away from them? Well, yeah. I, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah. It is, those kind of questions do exist on the test as well as information based on like how far in proximity from an airport or a heliport, those particular things. But uh, a lot of questions are specifically geared towards the fundamentals of, uh, of flying a fixed wing a plane, which I still... Yeah, like, do you, well, I yeah. guess we can't talk about the actual answers We can't questions. talk about the answers to the questions because that's, yeah. well, that's that would be really too lazy for Google. But, I mean, the, <laughs> the idea of uh, mm. kind of what we can give for, like, a heads up and how to study. One thing I would recommend, and this is against the too lazy for Google way of doing things, but have a second window open up that at least you can look up information as you write the test. Because yeah. how else are you going to know? I mean, the the handout they give you is hundreds of pages long to study, and you can't, you don't have enough time to go through the appendices and then the index chart to find the question that pertains to the area of what the answer could be. So the fastest way of doing it, have that second tab popped up, you enter in the, the question, you're gonna find a site that usually has that information or has that information that you can use for the test. Good on you for being able to find that because I found it really tough to find the answers. Really, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I found it really tough. 
So when I passed, I'm not ashamed to say I just passed. Uh, my percentage point was somewhere in the 70s. I just passed as well. I think it was in the low 70s. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and I was happy because that's, a, what, a 90-minute test to write, and I used all 90 minutes. I can tell you that much. There was no, like, I'm hopping for coffee, I'm coming back. Oh, no, no, no. I used the full amount of time to write this test. Uh, I had 20 minutes to spare, but I... 20 minutes to spare? I really didn't care if I got the wrong answer. I was like, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. <laughs> this guy. You use the full time for the test, I found. Mm -hmm. Janica, maybe it was a bit different with this, or somebody else, if you're watching, obviously. If you care, take the full amount of time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> take the time. Don't rush. Go back and double check your answers yeah. in the, at the end. Um, and afterwards, I believe, once you complete the test and you're basically fist pumping and you're like, yes, I did it, then there's another window that pops up where the Transport Canada says, and now you have to pay $5 or $10 to register your drone. <laughs> After you get the test. Really? I didn't do that. Oh. Well, you should. So, yeah, you should. Uh, you have to then take the serial number of your unit plus the unit type plus, I believe, your address information and particulars that then is sent to Transport Canada that then registers your drone within their database, obviously, mm -hmm. and that makes sense. But it's like first the cost of the test, then it's yeah. the cost of registration. So, you know, in the end, that's a, you know, that's a fair bit. Yeah, you know, and... Uh, just to play devil's advocate here, you know, uh, there's two arguments. One, that the test was way too hard. Yeah. And two, that it was a cash grab. Yeah. But just imagine if this legislation was put out and everyone went to write this test and it was really easy. Yeah. It would definitely seem like a, a cash grab then if it was really easy. You'd be like, why are we even writing this test? Well, and one more thing too is that after I wrote this test, and as you wrote this test too, mm -hmm. Transport Canada just released information about, I believe two weeks ago or maybe three weeks ago, that said that they now authorize the Mavic 2 Pro to fly, or the Mavic Pro, or the Mavic Air, or the Phantom 4 Series, or whatever. <laughs> to be able to fly under this particular license uh, legally in Canada. So theoretically, you could have written the test. A DGI could have had a, uh, they could have failed that particular registration process for Canada. Mm -hmm. So then are they going to reimburse the money in case that they didn't authorize these birds to fly? Was, when these were not approved, was it illegal to fly them in Canada? Who, who knows, I guess, yeah. So thanks again, you two, for joining us today as we talk about the feedback on the certificate of registration to receive your basic operations certificate in Canada to operate a drone. Yeah, this was a video on our thoughts and a few tips and tricks so you could pass the first time as well. Exactly. And if you like what you see in this channel, please hit that beautiful subscribe button below. Hit the like button. Give us a comment. Give us some feedback on how we can deliver videos to you on content that you want to see. And how about uh, all the people that passed the first time? Comment below. Exactly. We'll catch you next time. What'd you get for number two? We have different number twos. Oh. This is bullshit. Yep. Come on. Th that is not a drone question. That That is straight up pilot's license. I'm flying a Cessna. I'm not flying one of these. But yet it asks me that when I need to operate this. Time's ticking. Oh my god, I've only finished 30 questions and I've got like two minutes left. You know what? I'm not too lazy to Google this shit. Exactly. <laughs>